So you want to create a faux 3D look for your vector illustrations. Well, bringing them into Blender actually isn't too tricky and can give you quite a nice art style quickly. So let's look at a way to do that. I'm in Affinity Designer, but the process would be very similar for uh, Adobe Illustrator and Inkscape. With your illustration here, just go to File, Export. We're going to choose SVG for our export format and export the file. All right, and over into Blender, we just select all our objects here by hitting A on the keyboard then X on the keyboard to delete them and go File, Import, and SVG. And we just locate our SVG file. And you can't see anything in the viewport, but here we can see that there are there's now a load of curve objects in our outliner. So if we do A on the keyboard to select all, we can use the period or full stop key on the number pad just to zoom in and frame all of our objects here. What I'm going to do also is just rotate it about the X axis, rotate X 90 to stand the illustration up here. Within the curve options, if we go down to the object properties here, we can see we have a few cool variables to play around with. I'm just going to hit the forward slash key to isolate so we can see just the face shape here. And on geometry, I'm going to extrude. I'm holding down shift just to make it um, more sensitive. And then bevel depth a little bit as well, which is probably going to be something like that. And we can try and get that shape down a little bit by reducing the offset. But yeah, it, it doesn't take long before it starts messing up the geometry. Okay, out of isolation mode by hitting that forward slash. We're going to hit A on the keyboard to select everything. With the, the shape we've just adjusted, um, selected, highlighted, we're going to right click the properties we've changed and just click copy to selected. And I'm going to select all the objects and go to object set origin to center of mass surface. And now we can start um, realigning. I'm just moving it down along the uh, Y axis here, realigning our objects so they line up and make more sense. Okay, that layout looks a lot nicer. Um, now over on the render tab, we just make sure we're at EV, we're on EV here and switch to our EV render engine. I'm going to go into the environment tab and I'm just going to give a little more brightness to the environment and switch on ambient occlusion. Now by shift right clicking, I can move the cursor to where we will create an area light. Just scale that down a bit with S, uh, rotate it, R, move with G, we can use the little gizmo here. Uh, that is quite strong, so let's go under the light tab options here and turn the power down. I'm going to shift D to duplicate this light, scale it down, rotate it, and just create a nice sort of rim light going on. Might turn down the environment a little bit. And with our lights selected, let's just enable contact shadows so we get the casting of shadows on our objects that are very close to each other. 
And you can also switch on transparent under the render tab film options. That is about it really. Um, the one clear downside to this technique is that it expands out the shape to create the bevel so it may not be completely true to your original illustration. There is one other way um, that I was experimenting with uh, which I can just show you quickly now. So let's import our SVG again. And I'm just going to select all those objects. Let's move them over here. G and then X. And then again, let's rotate around the X. Um, now for this approach, uh, we are converting the curves to mesh. So with all of the curves here selected, I'm going to do convert to mesh. I'm going to tab into edit mode, just hit F. So we remove all of the triangulation within the curves. And then I'm going to start arranging the objects like before. Okay, with that arranged, I'm going to select again the head and go to the Modifiers tab and add a Solidify. Control the thickness in much the same way and add a bevel. And I'm going to add three segments to that and change it from limit method to angle. Now selecting all our other objects, I'm going to do control L and link those modifiers. All right, it's looking a bit better already. And there you can see, you know, the bevels aren't quite as strong, but you do retain the original silhouette of your illustration. If here the bevel seems tiny, we can go in and add a weld modifier and move that to the top and just tweak with these variables a little bit just so yeah it's it's adjusting the shape but you can see the bevel is getting stronger because it's not limited by two vertices that are too close together anymore um, so I'm quite happy with that Let's move the lighting rig, let's duplicate that and bring it over here. Switch on EV. So the benefit of this second method is that it keeps your proportions a lot similar to the original illustration, whereas this one tends to expand the shapes out when you create the bevel, but it's also more destructive and can take a little bit longer to tweak and get right whereas in this one you know you're still you've you've still got the curves so when you go in you can tweak the curves around and it remains highly editable and that's about it really i can see this is quite a handy technique for someone who is primarily an illustrator and just wants to experiment with a new art style by bringing things into 3D or even integrating things into a, an already established 3D scene. If you would like to download the files I've used today, I have a Patreon page which you can do so and I'll leave a link down in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching.